Almost a decade after the 2010 Deepwater Horizon disaster, there we go. hundreds of scientists are assessing the impact of the largest offshore oil spill in U.S. history. What follows are some of their stories, intimate portraits of research, innovation, and discovery. We keep hearing that 2014 has been the warmest year on record. I asked the chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball. 97% of the scientists who wrote articles in peer-reviewed journals believe that human activity is the fundamental reason we are seeing climate change. Do you disagree with that? I, I believe the ability to measure with precision the degree of human activity's impact on the climate is subject to more debate. So Obama's talking about all of this with the global warming and the, that, and a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. Today, Scientists are facing a unique and growing disconnect from politicians and the public. Here are some thoughts from gomery funded researchers about the challenge of dealing with science skeptics. Scientists today encounter more skepticism and more criticism, uh, and in fact, I, I would even say less trust. And, and that can be really frustrating as a scientist because we all work extremely hard and are all very honest people just trying to solve a problem or understand a problem in more detail. It's pretty baffling to me as a scientist to see how much skepticism there is today about science that applies to our environment and the way we should be taking care of animals and the planet. There's no doubt there are uh, science skeptics, and, and it's certainly in my lifetime, I've been uh, in the research field for over 50 years, and so I've seen that change. Trust comes from people working together and taking the time to listen. You don't develop trust from a tweet. You don't develop trust from a short headline. You expand trust through coming together with other people and understanding their perspectives and listening. We have, in many cases, isolated ourselves because it's much easier just not to deal with that conflict and just stay internal, stay in, as they call it, the ivory towers, and that's a mistake because you don't give, the, you don't give people an opportunity to actually talk with you and you don't take what you're doing and communicate it in a way that uh, is understandable by a broader group of people. You can't build trust by building a wall. You have to be able to cross that wall and talk with people. I think that um, it's helpful to point to the peer review process that no major conclusions are accepted without peer review and discussion through the journal literature. When I have conversations with people who um, don't believe as strongly as I do that science should be a, a fundamental basis for good decisions. I try to explain where we're coming from. I try to explain what the scientific method consists of, that we are aiming to be as unbiased as we possibly can. I think being honest with people and trying to explain it in a clear way um, and maybe giving examples that people can understand and can see in their real lives will help us um, open doors. It's not dumbing down the situation, but uh, giving them a rep the, the people, the skeptics, a representation that they have familiarity with. And that was really perhaps our, 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 our trump card, no pun intended. I feel like the way to deal with the issue of skepticism in science is to start young. So I do a lot of outreach with elementary school children to get them excited about current issues and current issues in the environment. And I'm usually surprised and happily surprised about how much they know and what they believe and how open their minds are. And they're very interested in solving some of the problems that we're facing today. Today, the scientific community is working together to push the boundaries of what they've learned about oil spills and what still needs to be discovered.